Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Khadija Okunulamidi turned many heads when she became the first woman and the youngest Nigerian to announce a bid for the 2023 presidency. Daughter of Liz lawyer and uh, former works minister Alhaji Femi Okunu, Khadija entered the political fray without giving an indication as to which political party she is with. And this has got some Nigerians questioning her political sagacity. You would agree with me that Nigerian politics is not for the faint-hearted, so how does she intend to prove her doubt is wrong? What is her plan for Nigeria if she becomes president? Joining us this morning on The Breakfast is Khadija Okunu Lamiri. Khadija, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. All right, morning. nice to have you. Le le how does it feel? I mean, um, what has it been like for you since you made the announcement? Oh, it's been relative calm. Um, making the media rounds and you know actually putting a manifesto getting it together and putting a team which is growing bigger by the day you know with the volunteers we have over almost a thousand volunteers now ten thousand a thousand a thousand and you know these people are just willing to put down their skills and you know everything that is required you know so this is this you know this is how the momentum is going okay has, has it been what you expected Yes, and um, you know, you never really know what to expect. Mm. And but if you have the right intention and you have, you know, everything that you think is good for the nation, then I think you should expect the best. All right. We, we know you made you made a speech, you know, and um, it was all over social media. Great um, uh, optics. Um, uh, but why did you join the race? Well. It's time, I think there's a huge gap in the political space. Um, what I've done should have, should have been expected from most of our um, leaders out there. Um, we see a business of silence these days. Um, things are going wrong, the ship is, we, we, it's clear the ship is sinking. And I don't think it's time for us to point, point fingers, number one. It's time to actually take, you know, show leadership by example. It not, not that you know, there are no worries or no fears, but you need to put those things aside and actually put the, the nation in front and put it, you know, set the agenda and let people you know, understand that there's, there are ways to go about it to rearrange the polity and make it work, make Nigeria work for everyone. So was it a case of, you know, I can't, I can't keep quiet while well, things are going bad? Um, if no, more, no one would stand up and, and speak out and do something about it, how would do something about it? This was how I was raised, yes. Fantastic. Okay, okay so let's, let's quickly look at the state of the nation. I mean, currently, right now, major concern for Nigeria is security. Uh, it cuts across board, you know, in the northeast and, you know, the, north, uh, the northern part the of the south, country, yeah. you have insurgency. And, you know, in the northeast, you have the issue of the IPOP agitation. But, however, security is a major concern. Paraventure, you become president. Or uh, how do you intend to tackle all of this? Well, um, first things first, you know, well, some of the reasons for insurgency is idleness of our youth. And, you know, people's voices, people feel their voices are not heard. And these are the issues that we need to tackle. We cannot do it from one, um, you know, from one state. You have to actually go around and actually listen to what the concerns are and bring everybody to the table and let the resources that are, we, ha we have ample resources. We're dependent on just one. We need to bring back all these resources and let people, let Nigerians benefit from the Nigerian resource. And you'd realize that insecurity comes from job joblessness it comes from you know lack of health care comes from lack of education these are the issues that um surmount to becoming um insurgency so you know throughout the course of our com campaign we're going to visit every single state we're going to have you know these roundtable conversations and discussions and actually find out what exactly are the issues because you know from different angles you hear different stories let let me hear exactly what it is and then we'll come up with a robust plan on how to solve 
um, you know, the, the different issues and that overall um, solves the um, security be, issue. Be, because, you know, uh, just like you have mentioned, I mean, some of this issue, the issue of idleness, not necessarily entirely the issue with the security architecture in the country. And that could, you could probably say in the South is a lot of persons are not satisfied with how resources, the marginalization, and that might be the case for the Southeast. But you have the, f uh, you know, farmers' headers clash, as some people would say, uh, this bandits. That would also be another. But it's a good thing that you have mentioned that uh, you would like to visit all of the states, and then it will be okay, you know, to actually find out. Uh, so, so let, let's get straight to another one now: structures, grassroots connection. We know that elections are not just won by. You just uh, wake up and say, okay, I want to become president, I want to become governor. The grassroots, what's your connection with the grassroots across the entire federation? What structures have you built? Okay. First thing, um, I am a grassroots person. I've always been. And um, I, need, I need us to understand that structure, are, they're not, you know, we talk about it like they're people. Structures are made up of people. And what you need to do is ensure that you have as, m as much um, connection to the people as possible. So the existing structures, you could say they accounted for. You could, but I don't really believe that they are. Because right now, 20% of, if we only get 20% voter turnout. That is not a clear indication of the voice of the people. So we need to activate the structures which are people that we haven't, that have been disenfranchised or just, you know, voter apathy. They just don't want to take part in the, in, in the process because they don't believe in the process. So we need, to, we need to reawaken the people for them to speak up to what they really want. Here is a test of the people. It's not a test of a, a small few, I mean a few or a, a little group or a minority. We, it is a test of the majority. This is, is a majority we're reaching out to. So, so, so the question now is this majority, you have talked about 2080, uh, how, what structures have you put in place to reach out to the 80? How connected are you to this 80? Well, um, we have connections in every state. That's number one. We need to build on those. Um, I'm sure you realize that I'm not sure we've really had elections where you get to interrogate your candidates. Um, on time. I think most times the elections always, you know, starts the momentum towards the election itself, three, four months towards the election. But right now we have quite a bit of time. We came out quite early. Um, we stated our intention quite early so that we can have time to actually meet and speak and be interrogated and, you know, put our plans in place as we go. Um, you know, it takes, it's a process and it takes time. So we've come out early enough um, just like I, you know, I'm sure other candidates. Yeah, well, in, in, I'm sure you realize that most, for the last maybe three, four election cycles, people come out, they only declare four months, three months before the election. So everything is real, you know, fast pace. Right now, we have a bit of, we, we have a little, you know, it took a while to even step out in the first place. So we have a bit of time and we're going to take, you know, go get to each of these states and build existing structure. You know, when people understand your message, and people um, align with your message. That is how you build structure. People just have to buy into the vision. You have to have a vision. You cannot, you know, you know, um, project and say, okay, this is, you know, anoints. It's not an, an this this um, race is not for anointing. It's actually for, you know, people having the best intention and having a vision for for their people, for their people, and the people buy into it and key into it. Then that's how you build structure. And yeah. Okay, um, um, uh, I, you know, I, I've put some questions online, you know, ask the public to ask, tell us what they'd like to know about you. Um, some are asking to know if you've run for any political office before. No, I haven't. Okay, so this is the first time. Yes. Um, I've, I've had conversations, you know, we've had conversations extensively about you. You've been a topic on many radio stations around the country and outside. Um, I'm sure you're well aware of that. Some people feel you should... Um, have gone for a, a lesser um, office, uh, maybe state governorship or state house of assembly or house of representative or senate. Um, someone even said to me, local government chairmanship. Okay. What do you say to that? Having not run for office, do you feel that puts you at a disadvantaged position and that probably 
um, you know, you should run for? I know you'd say no, but what do you think about these 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 comments? Okay, um, you know, I do appreciate people's um, opinions and how they believe we should we should go. However, you know, this was my call of duty, and the other positions you've mentioned, there are millions and thousands of credible Nigerians that are going to fill those roles, and you know. Going for the highest office, you know, is it's a call, no doubt, but it's also um, a call to let everybody know that all nothing is nothing is you know reserved. There are no positions that are reserved. Um, it is you, it's you are backed by the constitution. You can run for office, and ambition is quite key in this in this in in this journey. We cannot complain and not have um, you know ready candidates that would re be ready to step up and take these positions. So um, yes, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to many Nigerians stepping up to take these roles. And you know, I, can't, I, I can only do one. I can only have, you know, take one, one role. You know, the others are open for don't, everyone. Don't, don't you think it would have been better you know, to, has it, has, have you not thought about it? You know, start from your your this, this, your state. This, well, your your Lagosian, I believe. Yes, yes. And maybe start from one of the the, the constituencies, maybe a federal constituency, and pass it This out. is a narrative to and, close and, and, down And build the your political muscles to yeah, be able to fight for the next. The political muscle. That means you make you want me to become a career politician. That's what you're looking for, because you know you start. You know, like I said, I, I'm. It's not really about you know where you start from. It's about your plans. And they say start here because it's a, it's, a, it's a form of closing up the space. So you think you have to climb this ladder and then, you know, somewhere you could get compromised, you know, um, God, God forbid, but, you know, this, these things happen. And, you, you know, first things first, we need political will for anything to happen. Political will is, would be got from the highest office. That is where we'll get anything that we need to get done. With the way our constitution is, most of the powers reside there. So getting that power, it's not, re you know, we, it's important. It's an important seat. Now, to build the country forward, it still has to start from the local governments. That's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no mistake in that. That has to, because if anything happens, if you have any issues with security, you don't call the IG first. You call your um, police, the, um, the um, DG or a, AG um, around your, yeah, your CP around, uh, around your um, local government. So we still have to build from the ground up. But we need political will for anything to work from, from okay. there. Um, 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 uh, are, you, are you in it to win it? I mean, I mean, some people are saying, you know, Khadija is just coming out like the regular politicians um, to make a name for herself and see what comes out of it for her. Probably she'll bag an appointment from one of the parties or get get a bag or check or something. So um, are you in it to win it? Definitely. Um, I'm not really, like you, you mentioned earlier, I've never had, I've never sought any political office. Um, and the reason why I'm stepping out now is that I realize that most of our leaders have failed us. And, you know, here is, it, here is a time where you need to answer that call of duty. Um, you know, we're in it to win. However, all the political gain and personal gain, I'm, 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 I'm quite happy and quite um, content with what God has um, um, given me. So are you saying if you're offered um, a, a position, in the government that emerges, say you do not win uh, in 2023, will you pick that office up I, to serve? I don't. Um, to serve, well, I would. I think I can serve in so many other capacities. If you're given a ministerial position, for instance, I, in a very important ministry, I see you sharing water on Instagram, and it means you have a heart for the people. Mm -hmm. If the winning party mm -hmm. and the winning uh, government says, Khadija, we've seen your campaign. Mm -hmm. You've said a, a few good things we like. We would like you to come on our team. We want to give you a very important ministry, probably, uh, I don't know. Um, well, I, I wouldn't want you to put it in terms of a, an office because power is not in an office. Um, but which, whichever part, whichever, um, winning, whichever government wins, I do want to contribute as long as it's to benefit the the country. So, I will So you, I will you, you, you will take up the position? Not, I didn't, I don't think. Um, if if not, you were given that, that position, say, okay, you know, come, come contribute as minister, for instance, 
as minister, for instance, come contribute. You will you lost, but we don't think we should we should let you go. We want you on board. No, to there's contribute. no loss here. There's no loss. The okay. fact that you know, you know, at the end of the day, a woman has to. You have to put women in if you want to make a good decision. They say if you're making decisions without a woman on the table, I, I you're agree. making the wrong decisions. I, I now. totally agree. So. My candidacy alone has sparked conversations. It has, you know, the ruling elites have realized it's not business as usual. They realize that it's time to raise the status quo. You know, this alone, these are the kind of con contributions that are wins for me and for my team. Um, my team, they're amazing set of Nigerians that are, they buy into this dream and this vision of making Nigeria work for all. And, you know, so when you talk about positions, I don't want you to, you know, people might think you're going for the, for the post, but, for the but, position. But, you, but you, you're saying you, would, you wouldn't, you would, you would consider an offer to... To, to work to with the government, work with definitely. The government. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. okay, all right. I think that's something that we can... Okay, so so, so let's also look at, I know that you haven't been very vocal with um, the political party. Of course, you have to... Uh, express your interest on that particular political party. I don't know if you're ready to tell us now, um, or should we keep waiting? Well, we the, the 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 thing to do is that we want to make sure we get our message across to the people. You know, um, party politics is the bane of our politics in Nigeria. It's it's too mediocre. It's not even it's too low. Um, we talk about parties and we talk about, you know, you know, the issue, you know, what party is better than the other, rather than talk about the sol issues and solutions that for the people, you know, so we're, we, there are many parties out there and we're still in discussions, but we want to make sure that we make the right decision, but we'll announce soon. Okay, so, so let's even talk about the issues that you have mentioned. Another one still on the front burner is the fact that there's been call for agitation. I mean, you have a lot of people who want to go their ways because they feel like we can no longer be an entity, Nigeria. And on the other hand, you also have the fact that some people are calling for, let's restructure the entire architecture, let's restructure the entire polity. Some people say there's a difference between restructuring, those who are calling for the polity to be restructured, and those who are asking, we want to go separate ways. But I'd like to share your thoughts on that. Paraventure, I mean, we're just saying, you have the opportunity. Uh, how would you handle this? The issue of restructuring and those who want to go their separate ways? Well, I understand that, that there are, you know, people are discontent with some of the um, ways that the country is being managed. However, I am not a, I'm not of the opinion that we should go our separate ways. So unity for me is key. The reason, one of the reasons is that you know you think there's you know there's never an, there's an, a never-ending break. Once you break, it's it's a continuous um, downstream, and this is why you see that you know you have in, intertribal wars. This this is how it starts. So our our strength is in our is in our unity, and I want us to keep it. I want us to keep it that way. You know, m one of the things that I'm championing in this campaign is the fact that you know the Nigeria Nigeria still is greater together coming out we're coming out from a different angle as a contender as a as a as a, as a woman there are so many um how do you put it we're coming from a totally different angle so you you, you know we're, we're coming out as you know the unifying force which is what the plan is and we, but for us to be able to do this restructuring is going to have to happen so so you know the reason why a lot of people are agitating they feel very not satisfied and that's because when you want to talk about resources because at the end of the all of this boils down to who controls what who gets what when and how and that's the politics and that's the interest now some parts of the country feel dissatisfied with what they are getting. They feel like we generate so much, but we're getting so little. When you want to talk about the issue of inclusion of government, they're not being carried along, specifically the southeastern Gulf, I mean the southeastern region. And you want to also agree with me that for 2023, there's also a call that, you know, we have um, someone from the power should actually be given to the southeastern region of the country in terms of presidency, although the issue of zoning has never been inclusive in the constitution, but it has always been a gentleman's agreement. So how, how, how do you intend to resolve all of this? The marginalization is very big and people feel dissatisfied. You said we're making so much. We're not making, 
one tenth of what we should be making as a country. We're but but the, but, but the little but the little yes, that we're making, yes, you want to agree? Yes, yes. We're, we're we're depending on one tenth of our economy, and this is an issue. Um, there's so many there's so many resources that we have not. Um, the problem we have is we have so much potential. We are not able to apply that potential in the in Nigeria. Same with human capital. Same with resources. And what we need to do going forward is we need to ensure. The reason why we're agitating for these small resources, when you have just a little, everybody agitates. So we need to open up the economy. We need, we need to, um, you know, have some kind of diversification. As you can see, I'm even in um, Ashoki. These are some of the things that we need to start thinking, thinking within, and ensure that we grow our economy. That way, each region, you're, not, you're, you're making so much that, you know, the matter of what is coming from fed federal allocation is, should be nothing compared to what you're making within. So we need to give those sectors and give those um, um, parts of the economy attention and give them an enabling environment. That's the function of the government. It's not to allocate resources and no, you're supposed to enable these regions to make sure that they can operate at full capacity. So, so, so you're saying so you're supporting regional government? It's, I mean, this is part of the restructuring structure that I support. Okay, so you, you, you will give uh, the um the state's great autonomy. More, turn, yeah, they need and, and, they and need take power away from the center. The center is, you know, we need, we do need to restructure that. It's uh, okay. a bit. Okay, I'm powerful. going to come to to your 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 economic policy um, and um, where you stand. But um, uh, there, there's there are interests in Nigeria that um, are served by power remaining at the center. Um, you know, of course, we know what happened in the regional system where you had the states controlling their resources, regions controlling their resources, the north, the southwest, and so on. Um, but, but these days we are at the state, you know, uh, we have a state system. Um, there are powers or there are parts of the country that are um, carried along, let me use that word, better when everything is controlled from the center. And um, you, you're not alone. You're going to have to appeal to them to vote for you. You're going to have to have you know, discussions and you're going to have to give something, make promises to them. And they will not vote for you, may, sorry, may not vote for you if you tell them, when I come in, I'm going to take away the national kick that you're enjoying and allow states control their oil. And then we'll just give you something small. You make your money. You know, so how are you going to, how are you going to navigate this, the, this political Geop the geopolitics of Nigeria, let's call it that. Okay, it still comes back to you. Still, you're still zeroing in on oil. That's all we're talking about now. I'm, I'm zeroing on the interests. Yes, and the interest, the, the national cake right now is only baked by oil. And that's where the issue is. So, you know, it's easy. You know, when you have negotiations, you have to give something and take something. Okay. We need to give them other avenues to make money. So that they understand that, you know, we don't all have to hold on to this one thing that is dwindling world globally. Globally, the pe you know people's dependence on oil is dwindling. So that is not even a resource that is we should consider. But but the people on the streets in Sokoto, for instance. Don't worry, we'll get to them. That's don't, not they, a problem. They, 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 they listen to their leaders. Yes, which is fine. They so listen the leaders, to the northern, northern, and 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 of course the other states that are complaining that. They will suffer if we have um, a, a, a restructuring where the states control their resources and the oil money doesn't get to the center to be shared by FAC. They will suffer. So you have to talk. Are you are you sure you can convince them? We this is the, we're running a campaign and the campaign has a goal and a, and a vision and a mission. So this is part of how we're going to get the country. You know we're running to win. Like we said, it's a victory campaign. However, the plan is to you know, run a campaign such that we win the heart of the country. You know, the, it's, 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 it, this is what we're fighting for, the heart for us to understand and become a warm nation once again, a green nation, a nation that, you know, is, is, is full of bounty all over again. So, some would say we have the, the, um, the utopian or the idealist scenario and we have the real. Mm -hmm. The real, if you talk to uh, political uh, insiders, I've, I've, I, I call them outsiders. For instance, I, I can tag you an outsider, for instance, because you're not a career politician, as it were. Um, uh, I've spoken to 
couple of outsiders, you know, in, in my in my time as a journalist, who say, I thought it was like this, but I got in and realized that it's like this. For for God's sakes, to even get proper documentation in an MDA of, of government, you have to you may have to just push some push the envelope. Um, um, so uh, I, I, are you are you coming out with this idealist and this um, um, holier, the holier than thou? Sorry to use the term um, uh, stance that I'm not like the other politicians. Mm, we want to change Nigeria. Leadership comes from the top. Whether you like it or not, what you see is what you mimic. And um, there are many like-minded individuals, such as me, yourself, Mercy. It's quite, it's quite, you know, it's quite saddening that we have fallen into the narrative of, you know, the other side, if you want to put it that way. Um, even the people who are, you know having all these ideas or are doing this kind of they understand that the country is 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 going into in, is the ship is sinking and you know we're to, we're appealing to them to put self serving behaviors and um you know ser, self we're appealing to them yeah, to it, put these behaviors aside yeah. because we're it's time for us to grow the nation it's That's time appealing for us to the electorate not the electorate, the, the electorate, politicians. the politicians. But, but, uh, uh, um, um, Khadija, I've, 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 some have come to the conclusion, I've interviewed a lot of politicians, and I've come to the conclusion that it is the electorate that actually, um, they say, make the demands of politicians. I've spoken to one or two political outsiders who said, see, I went there and I campaigned to them. I gave them my beautiful ideas, and I gave them speeches, and, and I wowed them. They were inspired. On election day, they walked away to the side and collected 5,000 and voted against me. So, Khadija, uh, uh, are you aware, uh, what do you say about this? And are you, are you prepared to fight dirty? Because that is how it is. Nigerian politics, it's a dirty game, some would say. I'm sure you're aware of that. Are you, how, how dirty can you get? So, do, so, do, so, do, so. Do, you, do you have a, a war chest to, to pay no, so, no, maybe no, we need to no, put it directly no, 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 in her. No, 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 so, so, so she understands what no, I'm saying. No, so I, I just put it directly to her. Mercy, now. mercy. Allow me to talk. Are you, are, you, are you aware of these dynamics? That the voters out there whom you want to rescue will not vote for you if you don't pay them money. Okay. Let me get her. So I wanted to ask, would you be involved in the money politics? Giving and taking? You want to call it money, money, I mean, that's money what politics. it is. Okay. Would, you, would you give... You know, to get it may not, it may not be money, it could be bags of rice, it could be anything, it the could, give be, and take. Could, could be materials, or wrappers, or anything. Are you giving me, you giving me examples <laughs> of what ideas of what <laughs> I should do. Um, you know, in, in just like with you said, in politics, you have to let people know what's in it for them, and we're sending a message to understand, let people know what's in it for their children what's in it for them in, in, in the next, uh, you know, in, in the years to come, how they can tap into abundance, how they can tap into, you know, a country that they will be proud of. This is a message we're selling. This is a message that we want them to understand. Um, as we go, as we go along the journey, and you talked about war chests, we're not fighting a war. Those who have a war, war doesn't win elections. That's, I mean, um, um, money doesn't win elections. Opportunities, access to opportunities wins elections. Um, you know, so we, we understand, we understand the, stra the um, strategy of politics, and that's what's more important than any other thing. Um, so as we go along the way, we will do things, you know, we have to do victory. We have, I mean, we have to have legacy projects. Legacy projects don't come in 5,000 and 1,000 naira's. They come in things that are sustainable. Um, you go to, there's, there's so much underdevelopment that there's so much work to do. Regardless of if you win or if you don't win, you have to do this project so that people benefit from it for long term. You look back, of, and, and I've, I'm appealing to all the candidates and all the aspirants as they go about their campaigning. Please, let's, you know, let's go about projects rather than money vote buying so that at, at the end of each election cycle, we've seen so much work done, so much development. Even if you don't win. Yes. So this is how we should go about it going forward. So quickly, I'd, I'd like to share your thoughts on this one now. Uh, 
a lot of people have applauded the fact that you're a woman and you have a comment and we see the involvement of women in politics not being very you know great some people would say the 35 percent affirmation there's nothing to write home about and uh, you have some quotas asking this question specifically what would you do to improve participation we have laws it's not like we don't have laws to actually encourage participation of women in politics but uh, it hasn't really improved across different strata you know like we mentioned earlier one of, one of the benefits of this office that um, I'm running for is political will. You said there are laws, but without political will, it would not happen. So, you know, 30% um, um, affirmation, affirmation is, it's not going to, if you don't have the political will, it's not going to go through. So this is one of the key reasons and one of the key, um, it's, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's one of the major um, um, situations topics to handle once we get in, in power. And then also women, you need to, I think we need to get up. There's no, there's no one, you know, we, need, we just need to get up. We make a difference wherever, we make a splash wherever we go. And it's time for us to start improving. If it's going to work in Nigeria, it's on us. It's actually on us. So, so let's also get, you talked about the plan for Nigeria. I'm sure we haven't, you've told us about this is why you want to, but really, really, what are your plans for Nigeria? Well, as, as, during, as the cost of the campaign goes on, you will roll out more and more. You see more and more of, of our plans and, you know, the manifesto, would, you know, detail all the, all the systems. But, you know, maybe in a sentence or two, can you categorically tell, you know, Nigerians and those who are listening now, what are you, your plans? Um, well, okay, so... Like you mentioned earlier, housing is really, really key on, 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 on in our manifesto, housing, education, health, and security, like you mentioned. So these are some of the things that we put on top priority. And then the youth inclusion, where innovation, we're going to have to have, you know, innovation, innovative public policies that will just, you know, take us leapfrog years ahead of time. So these are some of the things that we're, we're, we're considering. Uh, um you know, um, a journalist once asked uh, um, Femi Fanikaide, who cross captured from the uh, PDP to the APC, uh, back to the PDP, and then back to the APC. I hope I got it right. Um, uh, he was once asked by a reporter in Calabar, um, who is bankrolling you? You know, and Femi didn't take it uh, lightly, but later apologized. Um, politics takes up money. Um, you said it doesn't, but I think you know it does. Even the gospel, we're told, you know, takes money to sh preach you know, uh, the gospel or whatever gospel you believe in. Um, do you have the funds to, 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 um, to bankroll your campaign? Yes, we do. Okay, we when do. you say we, so who, who? I, I, I don't want you to take you know, offense with this question, but who, who is um, bankrolling you? The Nigerian people. No, you know, no. we, we yeah. are, our, our system of campaign and how we're rolling is we need to be accountable to the people. So we are crowdfunding at the moment, and oh. that means every 1,000, 5,000, 500 makes such a difference. And because people have invested in us, we are accountable to them, rather than you know one or two big money bags that silence the voice of the people. So we are actually- How much, how much are you looking the, to raise? As much as we, I mean, as much you as probably, we go. probably should have a budget. You know, so what's well, what's yeah, what's the figure for those who are listening to know that this is what we need to help we, the target? What's the target? Well, we just look. Every, I want every petty trader and every farmer and every um, cloth weaver and every shoe shiner, if we still have those, I want them to contribute into this campaign because it's it's where we're building we're building the nation and it's this is part of nation building. Um, we're not going to, we promise, we're not going to um, mismanage your funds. We're going to be accountable. All our audited accounts will be available on all our um, platforms. Um, I can give you our email, I mean, our website is www.kolnigeria.com, www.kolnigeria.com. Um, and this is the same on all across all platforms, KOL underscore okay. Nigeria, Instagram, so, so, Twitter. So you're saying that um, you are going to rely on Nigerians to fund your campaign? Yes. Um, and you don't have the money right now? We have we have funds, and funds. yes, we so do. Who, 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 who is bankrolling? Obviously, it's, it's going to be personal crowdfunding. funds. Crowdfunding. Oh, okay, crowdfunding. you've had some money coming from yes, the public. Are, yes, So you're saying that um, 
you don't have a godfather. No. I have my father. Thank, okay. thank God he's, uh -huh. you know, I still benefit from his wealth of, of knowledge, knowledge and experience. Okay. And he supports um, you. He, my father is... You is don't have a... Because one of the... Um, I, I have a list of things I call, you know, the 101 on Nigerian politics for the political outsiders. One of the things that I've, you know, I've seen a lot of people say, outsiders who have become insiders, is that you need to have a political godfather. Someone who will take your hand to... The, the corridors. other godfathers or corridors of power oh. across the country because you have political systems that are headed by people and you have a multitude of people who participate in the political activities who move at their leader's command. It doesn't care whether the leader is doing right or wrong. You can see even in America it happens. Right and left, they just stick to where they belong. They don't want to move. Um, so, so, so have you thought about um, getting a political godfather maybe? Do, does it have to be one? Okay, godfathers. Yeah, and godmothers. Yeah, we have yeah. A I, lot I mean, of those. fathers and mothers. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot of those. Um, but you have many, godfathers. There are many, um, you know, progressive, um, youth minded elders in the political s um, space that I, I am, you know, close to and that direct and, you know, um, help with um, direction and how, you know, wisdom. Okay. So this is, this is, um, the function they perform okay. and that's really okay so so we end it now i mean we're at a time we're getting the prompt to end it now uh, just one question just one and very simple what happens if you don't win i mean it's not like you're not going to win everybody plans to win but what happens if you don't win we've already won this is already won. okay so so i mean realistically let's look at that now what happens if you don't win do you wait for another year do you fall you know, back like into I, something I'm, or, exactly? I'm, a, I'm, I'm a successful businesswoman and i have my um, um i'm an entrepreneur however you know we we are running a victory campaign and and if you don't win it, it's already a win this is already a win when position is not power Okay, so so some would say if you say you're already you're already winning, it means you probably just want to make a statement, make we, an impact, and, and look. Go. You know the fact that you know everyone is back interested in the politics of Nigeria, and um, they are like you asked the Godfathers. Nigerians are they are everybody's a Godfather, everybody's a Godmother. We just need to understand our power and take it back. You know that's if all if, it is. if both both leading political parties, APC and PDP, reach out to you. Um, to be a member of each and come come contest um, uh, in their party primaries, um, which would you go for? I have never been a member of any polit political party, and I'm not I'm not inclined to in those two. Those two. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Khadija Okuno, for coming, and we wish you the very best. Thank you very much for having me.